Hi, I'm Laura Marwood, Product Strategist for Cloud ERP, and today I'm joined by Cloud ERP Thought Leader, Paul Saunders. Thanks Hello. for joining us today. So today we're going to be talking about um, business process transformation. Um, now, Paul, if we look back at the changes in the past couple of years, you know, disruption and transformation, these are big words. So let's start with an easy question. Do you see business returning to normal? So the easy answer, no, no. Um, I think when you, when you look at what we have done, and we have been the broad tech industry have done over the last two decades or so, I think we've overused disruption and transformation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you look back at the last four, maybe five years, we've kind of really had true disruption and transformation. And uh, I think some companies have said, well, let's see if we can wait it out, and maybe things will get back to how they were before. But there is no return to how things were before, and there never has been. Mm -hmm. So I think there's just going to be today's normal, tomorrow's normal, and, and the next new more normal after that. So that's what businesses have to prepare for, not just say, let's kind of hope that this goes back to where it was. Now, Paul, um, we often say that the gulf between customers, businesses that are thriving in this, in this new normal environment and those who are falling behind is becoming you know, increasingly, increasingly big. Yeah. So what kind of companies are, are thriving in this new environment based on your experience? The way that I look at it is there's, there's really, over the, the past three to five years, there's been three types of company. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are those that were fortunate either through good planning and strategy or just happenstance, that they'd prepared themselves to, to be able to respond more uh, adaptively as things happened. So when you know, government lockdowns happened all over the world, they could send their employees home. You know, when supply chains got disrupted, they could get things from somewhere else. When manufacturing plants were shut down, they could make stuff somewhere else. You know, so that's the first type. The second ones were the ones that have got to where they are today really by brute force determination, hanging on by their fingernails or skin of the teeth or whatever analogy you want to use. And, you know, they're saying, you know, we're here, but that was horrible. Let's not do that again. So let's see how we can make sure that we become that first group of people going forward. And the third type of company are the ones that unfortunately have gone out of business. And for those companies that are thriving, Paul, do you think they are making smart technology decisions or are they, are they focusing on the mindset piece? Like how, how do those bits fit together? Well, hopefully both. Um, you know, you can't just, and I think everybody again knows this, you can't buy technology and hope that it's going to change how you work. Um, that was what we tried to do, I think, in the, certainly in the 1990s and early 2000s with ERP in general. We said, you know, we do things this way, we want to change, so let's put in a big ERP system and we'll force people to do things a different way. And we've seen, you know, you know in hindsight, that doesn't work. So I think for the, for the companies now that are, are saying, well, what is it that we need to, how can we best think about this? It's, first off is, what, what are we trying to do? Where are we going forward? What's, what's the world look like for us slightly in the future? Mm -hmm. And what's gonna differentiate us to our customers? So I think this brings us nicely along to the topic of Rise with SAP. Now, um, for some of our viewers who are maybe unfamiliar with this, could you explain to us Rise with SAP in, in layman's terms, Paul? I hope so, yes. <laughs> so, um, as I mentioned, the, the thing when it comes to any kind of business change, transformation, whatever you want to call it, is that you have to start with the mindset. You know, can we actually change? Can we do things differently? Do we want to be able to do things differently? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be the, okay, well, if I'm going to transform, it's going to be an A to B, a B to C, a C to, you know, and so on. It's going to be constant transform. Mm -hmm. So you've got to know, well, what is it that we do today? And what is it we're going to do tomorrow and then the day after and then the day after? And that's why, you know, with Rise, we have Signavio. And, and Signavio gives you the, you know, not just kind of the process analysis that says, okay, this is how we do X. Mm -hmm. But it's, this is how we do it and this is how we can improve it. And this is how we can continue to improve it going forward. And that's the most important thing. Um, and so Rise brings that in. And then the third part of Rise is the SAP technology portfolio. So you have the, the business technology platform. The way to think about the business technology platform is it is the orchestrator. It's, it, let's think of it as more like the conductor of an orchestra. It pulls all the different pieces together and it gets everything to kind of play in harmony together. Then you have uh, Cloud ERP. 
Cloud ERP is kind of the socket that everything else plugs into. This is where it all comes back to, your finance, your material flow, and all of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the SAP intelligence suite, the portfolio of products, our industry solutions on top. So RISE brings all of those things together to help a customer, not just say, would you like some new technology, but where are you going? We'll come with you on the journey and let us show you the best practices because we've done this literally thousands of times before. And Paul, what is it that you think differentiates SAP's offering necessarily um, compared to, let's say, some of our competitors? Um, well, I, I'll, I'll kind of paraphrase what Bob Evans from um, Acceleration Economy and Cloud Wars said, where he said, you know, Rise is, you know, it's, it's fundamentally different from what anybody else is offering. Mm -hmm. Because the thing that it, it, it's not just a technology offering. That's the piece that I love about Rise. Um, we make good technology. We, I mean, everybody knows that, but you know, there's lots of good technology out there. It's about how can we help that company achieve their strategic goals, not just a one and done transformation, mm -hmm. but to be in that mindset that they can always be able to adapt as the business changes. So Paul, we also talk about standard business processes and we also talk about differentiation. Mm -hmm. Isn't that an oxymoron? There's a good 75, 80, maybe even higher percentage of the things that you do in your company that are no different or should be no different than what anybody else does. Um, and they're, they're certainly not things that differentiate you. There's a difference between do we do them differently, and that can be from a whole myriad of reasons that have brought us to that point, uh, to you know, do they differentiate? Does somebody look at us and go, that's why I want to buy from that company. That's why I want to engage with that company, because that's a differentiating piece. So the way to think about it is if you look at, if you start with, uh, you know, get a, get a big whiteboard, for example, right on the right side of the whiteboard, this is where we're going. This is what the success looks like for us three years from now. Um, and you might say, right, then we're going to have 20% of our revenue will come from new products. Okay, sounds good. So what is it that we need to do to be able to get 20% of revenue from new products? Well, it's going to be, we have to have new products, we have to have good marketing, we have to have sales, we've got to have good manufacturing. Then you start to break it down from there. So what are the things that we're going to do? And you'll find that a lot of the stuff that you have to do is still the same stuff that you're doing today. You're still doing accounts payable, you're still doing accounts receivable, and so on. But there are some things that you're going to say, if we do this, if we do this piece better, we can get the product maybe faster to a, com to a customer than somebody else. That is a big differentiator for us and people will buy that and that will start to hit our strategic goal. Then you can say that's a differentiating business capability for us. That's where you really want to focus your effort. Great. Well, and for any customers for whom this is really, you know, this is very strongly resonated with today, um, what would you advise to them as the next step? I think that the first step is, and, and I know that our salespeople will kill me on this, is not just call up and say, what technology should I buy? The first step is, as a business, to pull together you know, a, a, a cognitively diverse group mm -hmm. and, and say, what do we want this company to look like five years from now? What's it going to be like for us to work here? You know, if you want to be a supplier to us, how should we work with you? If you're going to be a customer for us, mm -hmm. what is it that we need to keep and earn your business? Once you've started to work those things out, then engage with SAP. Paul, this has been a great conversation. Thank you very much for speaking to us today. Thank you, Laura. As always, it's been a pleasure.